For today's cup of coffee, we have something that's a little bit lighter than than what we've been discussing. I figure yeah. it's a matter of giving people a break. There are some people, it's interesting because sometimes when we do some of the lighter content, people don't don't listen or they don't view it as much, and that's okay. You know, everybody's got their something. They've There's different topics that they are interested in more than others. Mm-hmm. But it gives us a break. And it's never a bad thing to, you know, sort of, it's like riding a wave. You, you have to get to some of those, you know, peaks and valleys and different things like that and everything in between. Yep. Pretty much. Well, I mean, you know, there are some people that listen to death metal all day, every day. Yes. We like variety. I don't know how they deal with that shit. Like, morning and night, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right, but there are people that do it. They're also mentally unstable, so you Well, know. some, but not all. But it's just, that's their thing. So it's sort of that way about our topics. Mm-hmm. We, we like a variety of things. We do? Yeah. So we got a little bit lighter mood today. Uh-huh. It's not a matter of doom. It's post-doom. <laughs> <laughs> but post-doom. actually, yeah, this one was, was well written. Uh, this does come from Wikipedia, and the link will be included in the description box. And they're discussing... Abraham Lincoln's ghost. Hmm. So it's not one of these that's horrible. It's interesting. And the writer says, there have been several stories about the ghost of former presidents of the United States revisiting the White House, with perhaps the most common and popular one being that of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln's ghost, otherwise known as the White House ghost, is said to have haunted the White House since his assassination in 1865. Lincoln's ghost has also been said to haunt many of his former residences in Springfield, Illinois, including his former law office. So he's a busy ghost. He travels. Yeah. Because why not? You know? Mm Mm-hmm. And one of Mumler's most famous photographs... He didn't say who Mumler was, but one can assume that he was a photographer. Yeah. Apparently shows Mary Todd Lincoln and the ghost of her husband uh, standing behind her. And in the link, it does have a a picture. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool. So I do encourage everybody to go and uh, check out the picture. Yeah. And it says that paranormal researcher Melvin Willen, in his book, Ghost Caught on Film, claims that the photo was taken around 1869. Now, this is what I thought was interesting, the way that this was written. In parentheses, it says, after Abraham Lincoln's death. I think that's kind of required to be a ghost. Oh, yeah. So, it says in that Mumler did not know that his sitter was Lincoln, instead believed her to be Mrs. Tundall. And Willen goes on to say that Mumler did not discover who she was until after the photo was developed. So in other words, that Mary Todd Lincoln, because she didn't want someone knowing it was her, she had taken an alias. And I can understand that because there would be a lot of questions and, and different things like that. The College of Psychic Studies, referencing notes belonging to William Stanton Moses, who has appeared in photographs by other spirit photographers, claimed that the photo was taken in the early 1870s. Lincoln had assumed the name of Mrs. Lindahl, and that Lincoln had uh, to be encouraged by Mumler's wife, who was a medium, to identify her husband on the photo. So that's a pretty interesting thing altogether there. Though the image has been dismissed, of course, as being double accidental exposure, it has been widely circulated. Now, how in the hell did that... There's no way that could have been a double exposure. No, but people can't... There is a possibility, like... And I'm not saying that one is, but people have, like, done, like, ghost effects with double exposure... You know, stuff. Back in the 1800s? Oh, hell yeah. People knew how to do that, even back then, I'm okay. sure. Okay. 
Because yeah. the developing of photos, I'm sure it was a similar process as we have now with the chemicals and stuff. Right. Maybe. I don't know. I, I never did get to learn how to develop photographs like that. Dangerous chemicals don't you respirator. Yeah, yeah. They, well they ventilated have, area. Absolutely. They have found out that those things were more dangerous than I ever dreamed that they could be. Anyhow, Eleanor Roosevelt had uh, never admitted to having seen Lincoln's ghost, but did say that she felt his presence repeatedly throughout the White House. She also said that the Roosevelt family dog, Fala, would sometimes bark for no reason at what she felt was Lincoln's ghost. Now, Lincoln is not supposedly the only one that haunts the White House. Yeah. But, you know, he is, has been dubbed the ghost of the White House, so why not? Uh, President Dwight Eisenhower's press secretary, James Haggerty, and Liz Carpenter, the first secretary to first, uh, pardon me, the press secretary to first lady, uh, Bird, lady Bird Johnson. The first lady, Lady Bird Johnson. I thought I was seeing double there for a minute. Yeah. Both said they felt Lincoln's presence many times. And the former president's footsteps are also said to be heard in the hall outside the Lincoln bedroom. Lillian Rogers Parks stated in her 1961 autobiography, My 30 Years Backstairs at the White House, that she had heard them. And Margaret Truman, daughter of President Harry S. Truman, said she heard a specter rapping at the door of the Lincoln bedroom when she stayed there, and she believed it was Lincoln. Mm-hmm. Well, it would make sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. President Truman himself was once awakened by raps at the door while spending the night in the Lincoln bedroom. Several unnamed witnesses have claimed to have seen the shade of Abraham Lincoln actually lying down on the bed in the Lincoln bedroom, which was actually used as a meeting room at the time of his administration. And others have seen Lincoln sitting on the edge of the bed, putting his boots on. I think it's pretty cool. I really do. Yeah. It says the most famous eyewitness to the latter was Mary Eben, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt's secretary, who saw Lincoln pulling on his boots, after which she ran screaming from the room. <laughs> Good. Well, I don't know. I mean, we don't know how we're going to respond when we see something paranormal. We really don't. I pretty much know how I respond to the most paranormal things. It's like, it's fine. It's about damn time I saw something. <laughs> it's always one of those, what? It's like, did that? Did I really just see that? Holy shit, I just saw that. Oh, yeah. that's so cool, dude. That's crazy. Others have actually seen an apparition of the former president. The first person reportedly to have actually seen Lincoln's spirit was First Lady Grace Coolidge, who said she saw the ghost of Lincoln standing at a window in the yellow oval room, staring out at the Potomac. Theodore Roosevelt and Maureen Reagan and her husband have all claimed to have seen a spectral Lincoln in the White House. A number of staff members of the Franklin D. Roosevelt administration claimed to have seen Lincoln's spirit, and on one occasion, Roosevelt's personal valet ran screaming from the White House, claiming that he had seen Lincoln's ghost. I mean, that's pretty cool. Wouldn't you give somebody hell for the rest of that you knew them? Yeah, I mean, you would have to. It says, perhaps the most famous incident was in 1942 when Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands allegedly heard footsteps outside her White House bedroom and answered a knock on the door, only to see Lincoln in frock, coat, and top hat standing in front of her. She promptly fainted. I think royalty's supposed to be delicate or something. They are delicate. Are they delicate? Yes. They can't handle that shit. (laughs) They can't handle menial tasks without someone else doing it for them. How can they deal with handling a paranormal something? They don't have to deal with menial tasks. That comes with the territory of being royalty. That's what I'm saying. Like, they can't do menial tasks. That's crazy. Because they have other people. They can't. They can't. Like, they would freak the fuck out if they had to go mop the floor just once. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're too delicate. Yeah. It was like that story about the princess and the pea. Mm Mm-hmm. That she was so delicate that she could feel the pea under all those mattresses. 
I call bullshit. I call bullshit, too. So, anyhow. You know what would keep me from sleeping? All those fucking mattresses. <laughs> Put it on the damn floor. floor. <laughs> really? This is a great account of uh, Lincoln's ghost. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. He was a character. He really was. Brilliant man. Mm. But he And he was just a character. It says that he loved to retire late, take a long, hot bath while drinking a scotch, smoking a cigar, and relaxing. Mm. I can see that. Yeah. And it says there was an account on one occasion that he climbed out of the bath and naked, except for his cigar, walked into the adjoining bedroom. He was startled to see Lincoln standing by the fireplace in the room, leaning on the mantel. Churchill, always quick on the uptake, simply took the cigar out of his mouth, tapped the ash off the end, and said, Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. (laughs) That's just brilliant. Lincoln smiled softly as if laughing and disappeared. Churchill smiled in embarrassment. What a great story that is. That is just an amazing thing. Lincoln's ghost was reportedly seen outside of the White House as well. In Loudonville, New York, Lincoln's ghost was said to haunt a house that was owned by a woman who was present at Ford's Theater when Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth. Other Lincoln hauntings include his grave in Springfield, Illinois, a portrait of Mary Todd Lincoln, and a phantom train on nights in April along the same path his funeral train followed from Washington, D.C. to Springfield. The last reported sighting of Lincoln's ghost was in the early 1980s when Tony Savoy, White House operations foreman, came into the White House and saw Lincoln sitting in a chair at the top of some stairs. Abraham Lincoln was not the only Lincoln ghost witness claimed to have seen, witnesses claimed to have seen in the White House. Willie Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's 11-year-old son, died in the White House of Typhoid on February 20th, 1862. Willie Lincoln's ghost was first reported to have been seen in the White House by staff members of the Grant administration in the 1870s, but reports have been made as recently as the 1960s. President Lyndon B. Johnson's college-age daughter, Linda Bard Johnson Robb, claims to have seen the ghost and talked to him. Little eleven-year-old, yeah. yeah. Uh, that means, I mean, I seriously, mean, be pretty damn cool. Uh, Mary Todd Lincoln. Now, you talk a woman that about a woman that went through some shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, to lose her child and then to have her husband assassinated, and it's a wonder she didn't lose her mind. So I can't. Yeah. I mean, who could fault her for going to a spiritualist or or somebody like that, trying to get some answers? Yeah, you I know. Agree. That would have been crying out, why, God, why? So. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I think if of any ghost that belongs to remain in the White House, that would be Lincoln. I agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly there. Did you ever watch, what was it, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter? I love that movie. That is just... It was funny as hell. It's not going to change the world, but it is a fabulous, fun watch. Mm -hmm. And oh my God. It's a good theme movie. I think that somebody needs to give the ghost of Lincoln an axe and let him clean house. If he could. You never know. He was Abraham Lincoln. He did a lot of things that people never thought he could do. Mm-hmm. So that was a lighter, that was, that was a cup of, that was a dark roast with, you know, decorative creamer on that one. It's a good story. It it's is a good, a good story. story, especially about Churchill, because Churchill has always fascinated me. I know that you're not as, as far as, you know, political history and stuff as much as, I am. I don't know. I always had that, you know, Hmm. I was always geared towards a lot of that stuff. But, um, yeah, cool story. So It is. I liked it. Yeah. And I will tell you, we got to go to Washington. The first time was when I was a senior in high school because they used to do that because they used to teach things like civics. Mm. Mm -hmm. They teach that now. 
and and this is the reason if people don't know they have a thing then it's very easy to take away from them the thing they never knew they had that's the whole point yeah and to visit like you know the senate the the different guided tours to actually see the washington monument to go up in the washington monument incredible i mean just there is a presence to those buildings that's unlike anything else and um what made them the greatest well two things one is arlington cemetery where's that um it's there in washington and it's as far as um there's only certain people that can be buried in arlington usually it's people that have served in the military for and different things like that i think there might be some more other presidents we're gonna have viewers going how do you not know this it's late and it's been a long day <laughs> but also the vietnam memorial that's known as the wow hmm. and it's just i mean i just stood there and you know tears just streaming because these are were real people that really gave their lives for this country and lincoln did too yeah and that you would see people obliviously walking through these places. There was no reference. Um, they just didn't get it. We actually got to see the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And it was just... What does that mean, like the changing of the guard? They have, they have a guard that's there, and, and it's like the eternal flame. And... It was a matter of no one knew who this person was, but it was the symbolism of all who have fought, you know, have fought and have been killed for this nation. Hmm. Now, you can people can argue whether it was a just or an unjust, whatever it is. It doesn't matter because these people went and they served and they died. That in itself deserves reverence. Yep. But what they do, it's it's very much, um, I don't want to say pomp and circumstance. They're, they're, in the military, there is an order to everything. There is a meaning to everything. There's a meaning to the fact that our flag outside is flying upside down, which is a distress signal. Mm-hmm. And actually, in, in flag etiquette, when it becomes dirty or torn or whatever, you're supposed to burn the flag and replace it. And ours is very tattered right now because it goes along with the flag being turned upside down. Right. And when things are set back in order, then I will replace the flag. But until then, those who know, know. But the changing of the guards, it's very policy procedure. It is very precise. I mean, the number of steps these people take. And as far as the spinning of the rifles and, and the different things like that, um, it's incredible. Yep. And we have taken so many things for granted in this country for so long. Mm. And maybe that's why we're going through what we're going through now. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And it's just, uh, it, it's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. And it's what, as I was reading this, I thought, you know, I wonder if this, one of the reasons that no one has seen uh, Lincoln's spirit for for years since the 80s could be that some of the people have, they can no longer see, could be that, uh, you know, a lot of them may not be worthy of seeing his ghost. More than likely, honestly. So, it seemed but, like he didn't show himself to just anyone. Right. Right. So, Abraham Lincoln's ghost. The White House ghost. And God bless his soul. Mm-hmm. So, if you've had experiences with the paranormal, supernatural, encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, Specter sightings, if you've got Full local... body apparitions. Yeah, really. If you've got local, regional, family myths or legends, send us an email to cupofcoffeewithscream at gmail.com. And thank you all 
for taking time to view these and have coffee with us and ponders. Yes. And we truly do appreciate that. And and we tr- when we say that we care that you know about the people that may be watching, we mean that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we do. So, you know, if you need somebody, if you've got a prayer request, email me. We will pray for you. Mm-hmm. We have had lots of practice in prayer. Oh, yeah, we definitely have. Every day, all day. So you all have a beautiful, blessed day. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, subscribe and click that little notification button for daily notifications of our daily uploads. Thank you all. Have a great evening or morning whenever you're watching this. <laughs> I don't know your time zone. I don't know when you watch this. Have a great day, whatever, or great night. Have a great whenever. Have a great whatever, whenever. Oh, period. <laughs> Done. Just have a good. Just have a good. <laughs> Bye. We'll see you on the next cup. Bye.